Hi all, it's Gav here from danceplanet.tv. Thanks for joining me as always. And today I'm mega excited because I've got Hendo, John Henderson, on my show on Dance Planet to speak darts. Now as always guys, I've got so many questions to ask him and I know that you guys have been amazing and sent loads in too. Obviously I've had to limit down to X amount, otherwise me and John will be here till next Christmas discussing them all. So first of all, thanks for coming on to the uh, show, John. How are you today? I'm not too bad. I've just had a good, good couple of hours practice, so I'm getting ready for the weekend. But all is good, form's good, so hopefully kick off the new season the way I ended the last one. Ah, absolutely brilliant. Obviously, 2017 was a great year for you. Um, up to number 28 in the world, or 27, I think now, with Phil Taylor dropping out. Um, but I've got to speak about your highlight when you um, obviously beat MVG in the Grand Prix uh, 2-1. What a moment that must have been, and a touch of buzz to do it on telly. I must admit, it was a great, great feeling to beat Michael. Obviously, Michael's the, the man to beat, the man of the moment. The moment uh, he's, he's playing so well. So to get one over on Michael was was quite sweet, especially on television as well. And it maybe wasn't that a pretty game. Again, who, who else is going to beat Michael with a 76 <laughs> like, look, A it, win's a win. You know? A win's a win. So, Sometimes uh, you have to win ugly, they say, don't you? And it doesn't matter. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's what I, I was cheering and going mad. Obviously, a big fan of yours. Um, anyway, but obviously, um, with 2017 being such a good year, 2018 has obviously started off great as well. Um, in the world's beating Daryl Gurney there, obviously maybe a little bit of revenge for the semi-finals in the Grand Prix. Well, uh, as I say, uh, beating Daryl was was good as well. I must admit, I've never actually looked at it as as revenge. It's to me, it's just a another win on the on the world stage. So. Okay, a lot of people have been saying that this is a sweet beat and Darrell, but I don't see it like that as a revenge match. No. It's me when I know that's match and progressing in the world after Christmas, which I haven't done so far in my PDC career. So it was nice to, to actually go home and enjoy the turkey. No, I'm still on it. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. I was watching. Well, my wife, obviously, as you've just spoken to Laura, is a, is a huge fan of yours. She was screaming in the background, my dad and up the rounds. Uh, it was just, it was a brilliant moment. Absolutely loved it. Um, to see your progress. So obviously, what is your ambition for 2018 then, John? You know, is it the top 16? Is it is it to go higher? Have you have you got something that you know where you want to be at the end of the season or? Well, uh, my, my, my anyway, obviously, uh, the top 16 would be nice to be sitting here talking to you this time next year as a top 16 player. It's going to be hard, a lot of hard work to be done, a lot of practice. But I'm just looking at one tournament at a time, trying to qualify for the major TV tournaments, which is every player's uh, aim to do, starting off with Blackpool, and then the rest of them just takes care of itself. And if I reach the top 16, I do. It would be lo lovely to, to get there. But it's, it's going to be it's going to be hard, a lot of hard work in front of me. But yes, that, that, that would be my aim to try and get as close to that top sixteen position as possible, close Cause, as possible. Because obviously, darts is so different now compared to what it was even ten years ago. This the, the the youngsters and the money, the prize money, the ambition. The youngsters are just like you know the sponsorships there now, isn't it? So it's it must be so difficult when you've got this new breed of, of like the real youngsters coming through at such a young age who who can dedicate every minute of their time into it as well, isn't it? Definitely, the youngsters are coming through. They just go on that stage, you know. <laughs> They've got no fear. They kind of, they don't seem to have nerves the, the way I used to when I first came across the the PDC. They just uh, they go and they, they don't play. They seem to play the player. They just play the board. Which I, that's what I try and tell the youngsters to do. Yeah. Try and forget who they're playing rather than just concentrate on your own game. But when you've got like say Michael and Phil behind you, it's hard not to. But as you say, this young breed that are coming through don't seem to. And I don't yeah, care, do they? They're just ruthless, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? Oh. I just watch them think. I see that youngster that just won. Was it the, the junior? Um, what is his name? Um, Van. Oh, oh, oh. Van der Heijen. Oh, my God. Yeah, Some of the checkouts there. were just insane. Do you know what I mean? It, it just looked effortless. Yes. I know. They're, just, they're, they're, they're 14, 15 year old. They're just they're coming through earlier and earlier. And the standard, they're, they're just. It's frightening. It really is. I think but it's the, good to see. It's it just making the, the game even better. Like. Yeah, definitely. I think the foundations there now, isn't it? With all all the set up and different things and a lot more tournaments for them to get involved into it and play at a much more competitive level as well, isn't there? Definitely. Right. There is this, well, this is the PDC put on all those tournaments. It's fantastic. 
there's no much free weekends. The money seems to still go up, which is a another big attraction for the players to come across. Yeah. No, no, the games are a really, really good place, and it just seems to be getting better and better. Oh, that's a good time to be in darts, isn't it? So, uh, what I want to what I want to talk about is a lot of people. We always talk about your um your rock and throw. Now, is that something that you've always had, or is it something that you've developed over recent years, or or you know, has it always been like it? Can I say, I don't know how many times I've been asked this question, and I, and I still don't know how to answer it. Uh, I, I, I never actually played darts as a youngster. I was quite a late one on the scene. Oh, I My first county game when I was about 26 years old. I uh, so uh, I wasn't really a youth player as such. So, But uh, how the rock and motion came, all, came about, I've absolutely no idea. It's, not, it's nothing that I practice. It's just, it's just one of those things... You know, there's millions of darts players out there. We, I don't think there's two darts players that got the same throw. <laughs> no. And nobody got the same kind of style as myself. But uh, I, and I, and it's, I don't know how it came about. It's just one of those natural things that I've got. Like, but it's certainly unique, though. Once you get that first one in the treble, in, in the treble 20, the other two often follow, don't they? Do you know what I mean? It's almost like a motion sort of... If you get it right, you're on, aren't you? Yeah, well, if, if if I get that, if the rocks in time with the throw, it's really effective. Yeah. But my God, it can get ugly when it's not there. It's uh, <laughs> I could be hitting ones and fives. Oh, uh, it it can't get ugly but <laughs> when it's on song. It's really effective, and I can compete with the best. Like. Fantastic. Because I recently did, um, on one of my videos, I did a bullseye challenge. And that's the first time I've actually done a video of myself throwing darts. And I put it on there and a couple have come back and said, you're like Hendo, you've got that rock and motion. And when I looked at back, I do slightly do it. But I had no idea because I'd never even videoed myself doing it. But uh, I, I, like I say, I suppose you just, you, you never look at your own throw really. Like you wouldn't know if you was obviously weren't on telly and there was hundreds of people. It isn't something that you tend to do, is it? And well, the, I remember the first time I actually watched myself back, which would have been on the late side, and and I feel like you know, everybody talks about the rock. And yeah. I didn't realise how much I rocked until I actually watched it on the telly. I'm thinking, oh my god, it's, <laughs> there's a bit of sway there. But so, as I say, where it's come from, I've no idea. Like it's just just my natural throw. And, oh, it's brilliant. And I love it. I think it's brilliant. Top pros that when you're telling someone, you can you tell a youngster to keep still, keep your head style and all that but I can't tell a youngster that because I'm all over the place but <laughs> but it's uh, effective like Mencia Silovic is another one and he kicks his leg out and he do that obviously he's in the top eight of the world now isn't he do you know what I mean it just shows as long as it works for you obviously you, exactly. of course you can give like all your different advice and that I suppose but it's what works for you and and that's it really isn't it uh, well, I have thought about kind of trying just to stand still and, and, and to trying to as I say stay steady but it doesn't work for me. It's never gonna work. So <laughs> why change something? It's got me to where I am. So I'm just gonna stick with exactly. it. Exactly. And hopefully I can kick on from where I'm at. Like definitely. So we are, another question that I've you know want to ask you: Are you a big practicer of the game? And when you're practicing, do you practice more on doubles or you score them? It's, well, I, I do about about a two to three hours a day. Uh, maybe if there's a big tournament coming up, I maybe put an, a wee extra four, maybe. But uh, I practice a lot of a lot of legs, uh, just playing normal legs. Can I give them myself twelve on the throw, fifteen against? Just basically that. I'll go round the board and doubles. Uh, Peter, he gives me a lot of good tips of what he does, so I kind of just carry on from what he tells me. It, it seems to be working because in the in the past I've been struggling a bit with my finishing and my doubles, but he's introduced me to a couple of couple of games that you can play on your own, and it seems to be working. So. Who's that? Sorry, is that Pe is that Peter Wright? Do you mean, or who's that? Sorry. Yes, Peter Wright. He's, yeah. he's, he gave me a few tips on how to. Yeah. Just a little game you play on your own, because okay? obviously you don't get the pressure, but he gives you a few games. It's it's good. Like I uh, enjoy doing them. He's really yeah, nice guy, isn't he? He's, he's, He's such a nice guy. He's, he's local to me as well. I've never met him. I think I have once just to say hi to, but he's only about sort of 15 miles from where I live. Um, obviously, I'm oh. down here in Suffolk. So, um, yeah. Another thing I wanted to ask you, John, is how many nine darts have you hit, whether it be not just, you know, like practicing or how many have you hit in total? Well, in competition, I've hit two. I've hit one in our local tournament up in Scotland, and I hit one in my... I think it was my second, third pro tour on the PDC in Derby against Andy Hamilton. Oh, right. Uh, well, I could actually say I've had two in competition, but 
In practice, uh, can loads. Really? <sighs> in practice, I suppose, but uh, yes, but uh, as I say, in competition, I've just had the two. But uh, it was sweet when I had the one against Andy, like it was because obviously, my I just moved across from the BDO. Yeah. And you know, try to make an impression and wow. a nine dart on my third pro too, it was quite nice. Boom, like, nine dart, I'm moving across. Oh, it must have been awesome. Absolutely brilliant. I can't imagine what it must be like to be to be really good at something that you love as well. Do you know what I mean? I'm sort of jack of all trades, master of none. So to be something like I know we had a quick chat yesterday, just to be good at something that you love must be you know the best feeling in the world and every day must be must be great and i know it's hard because obviously we are traveling and different things but it still must be great to, to be able to do that isn't it well if someone was to say to me about 15 20 years ago that you would be throwing darts for you as a job i would have probably laughed at them yeah so, uh, so to actually do it as a deliver is fantastic wow it's a healthy term again obviously the financial side's very good if you're obviously if you're if you're playing well and yeah. no, I'm loving every minute getting up, throwing it at practice board. I thought I might get bored practicing on your own, but no, because I'm playing well at the moment, it seems to encourage you to practice even more. So hopefully Fantastic. I can just keep on going and Ah, oh, so brilliant. Uh, Have you got any hobbies away from darts then, John? You know, stuff just away from the board when you want to get away from it, where it's golf or, I know, you know, is there another sport or, or, or just something that you love to do? Well, I'm a bit, I, like, I like to watch football. I'm a big football fan. Oh, are you? Who do you support? So, I like, I go, I go and watch Celtic when I'm at home. Like, if, it's not often I get the, the weekend football, but it's nice when the, when they call a fight for the likes of the Champions League or the Wednesday night games, I get to go, wow. to go down there. It's, a, it's about a three and a half hour drive to Glasgow from Aberdeen fairly early. But, uh, but it's, I love it. I love it. It just gets me away from the darts. And I've been a season ticket holder for the past 30 years. So it's been a passion of mine watching the Celtic League. So yeah, I like to see Celtic do well in Scotland. Obviously, my wife likes to see Hibs do well. <laughs> So I always wind up a lot to see Celtic. Um, but yeah, I think as it's the same as anything, you need an outlet just to get away from something that you do all the while, just to, just to do something different, don't you? It's important, isn't it? I, I mean, like last year, we when I played at the Worlds against Andrew Gilden, I lost, I think it was two sets to nil up, yeah. either the first or the third set, and I actually lost that game. And uh, I felt a bit low yeah. uh, coming away from the Alley Pally that night. And, Luckily enough, that we had a, a, hold, a three week holiday book to America. Oh, me wow. And my wife and we went away. And I could have given up the game after that night. And it's no offence to Andrew Gilbert. No. It's a game that you should have won. won. Because I was so far in front. So I think that that three week break kind of helped me just to you know, recharge the batteries. If I was to come home, I'd have came home and stewed over it. Yeah. And I would have thought about it and thought about it. And I might have given the game up. Yeah. That's how I felt at the time. Well, you felt that but low, we, did you? That night? Bloody yeah. hell, yeah. God, it must... We went away for about three weeks and we came back. I didn't even... From we, came, we got a taxi from the airport to the, the house. Didn't even unpack. The first thing I did was go upstairs, picked up a set of darts and started throwing them. And Gronick says, what are you doing? And I'm just, I just waited to see if I, if I got the the hunger for it again and I ended up staying on that board for about 40 minutes never, never even packed unpacked or anything like that so it's certainly paying its dividends it's now though isn't it it's certainly paying its yeah. dividends now definitely definitely so I just showed you that hearing something away from the darts if it's not going your way it's sometimes I just get a break from it yeah so it was, it was nice to have that if I didn't have that holiday then God knows I might have just been yeah. Screwing over that feet, and then it would have been a bad year. But no, it's it's became a good year, and hopefully I can kick on two thousand eighteen. Fantastic. Well, what I've got now is I've got some of the um, subscriber questions here. Um, so I'm just going to run through those, um, what they've asked here. So I've got Mail Duck. Um, that's the Twitter name, obviously. Um, I'm the YouTube name, sorry. He said, do you think that you can make it into the Premier League next year? Oh, well, that's a, <laughs> that's a tough ask. It is. Uh, it's, it's every player's dream to, to, to play in the Premier League. I know I've, I've spoken to the players that are in it and they say it's high, it's quite tiring. The travelling from the 
got to be there on the Wednesday, playing the Thursday, then Pro Tour Friday, Saturday, <sighs> Sunday. It's it's quite quite tiring. But I'd love love to have a chance at it. it uh, whether next year is maybe too soon, I don't know. If I can still make the same progress from 16 to 17 and I can't 18, you just never know. No. But it's something that you'd definitely like a challenge at. Definitely. Oh, I, 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 I think that's the pinnacle of any darts player's um, career. Even, you know, just to get in to say, I've played it once. Do you know what I mean? It's it's the, right. it's, it's the highlight, isn't it? Um, even, if your name, even if your name's mentioned. mentioned. Uh, now, last, it, it can, you know, you're obviously doing something right on the floor, on the TV event. So hopefully I can maybe push my name forward for next year. But it's a big ask. But... A lot of hard work in front, but you never know. You never know. Right, thank you for that. Another question we've got here um, from <laughs> Sharp Ass, his name is. Do you think that in today's do you think that in today's game checking out um, over a hundred is more important than ever with the level of talent in today's game? Definitely, definitely. It's always been a kind of problem of mine in the past from getting down to the business side of the legs. I've always kind of struggled, but as I say, I've been practicing my finishing. And it's kind of the, the one to between 101 to 170 is becoming more and more crucial. If you're not doing it in three darts, you really must do it in six. Yeah. Or you're going to lose most legs. So it really is vital here that you, you practice your finishing because, it, as you say, it is a very important part of the game. Of the game. Us is the bull. I think the bull's become it has, isn't it? More, more important now because the amount of games it's going to the, the final leg and having the, the, the darts for the last leg is becoming so crucial. So every bit of the game now is very important. Like. <laughs> you have to be at your top all the time. Um, thank you for that. <laughs> Adam wants to know, when you're drawn to play Michael Van Gerwen, do you prepare differently in that game than what you would against other players? Not no disrespect to other players, but I, just, I think he's just wondering, do you prepare differently knowing <laughs> you're going to be up against MVG? God, blimey. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't, no, I just but I do exactly the same as I do for any player. Michael's no different. I know, I know he's the, he's the best player in the world at the moment. But no, I just practice the same the same way because I feel as though my game, my normal game, is uh, is good enough to beat him. Uh, well, wow. one, two, at the end of it. <laughs> but uh, but no, I, I don't do nothing different. Exactly the same as I would do at any other player. Yeah, brilliant. Well, thank you for that. And another one we've got here from Darts Life. He, sa he says, do you even practice on double 16 or double 8 because you're too good at tops? <laughs> I think that's a good question. <laughs> well, there's been a bit of a problem when I landed 32. And it's, it's been a problem for me for years. And I think every, every other player knows about it as well. It's, it tops is my, is my double. And if, if I don't get it tops, I'm sure other players are thinking, oh, He's below 40. He's gonna, I've got a chance here because I've struggled for years on 32. So I have been trying to put it right. Uh, I've been putting a lot of practice into the, that side of the board. But uh, tops has always been my has been my double. But yeah. uh, no, I didn't practice much on it because I know it's it's their format. But I do a lot of practice on 16s and 8s now. Like. Yeah, I suppose it's difficult, like you said. I know you said earlier on that you, you know, you do your practice and different things on your own and that. But every time I go, I'm, I'm like I said, I don't play at any standard anyway, and I just like throwing. But I go around there and I think, yeah, I'm going to go around the board and, and and do my doubles because often I can score quite well, get the doubles, and then I'm all over the place. But within ten minutes, I think, nah, I just want to try and hit one eighties. I'm a nightmare. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's it, it can. You know, it's, it's, it's quite. It's, it's, it is quite hard to play up the practice on your own. Cause a lot of people say, oh, I can how you do it because they get bored far too, uh, far too early. And, oh, after 10 minutes, oh, I put the darts down because I'm bored. But oh, it's just something I enjoy doing. I've, I've always enjoyed practice on my own. Uh, going around the board and doubles a few times a day. It's, I, I actually enjoy it, but I know some of the players don't like practicing their own. Like, but no, it's, it's good for me. It's working yeah. for me. Some of them have been quite open in the past. I always, um, I always remember, oh, what was his name? Um, from Wolverhampton. Um, oh, I forgot his name now. Wayne Jones. So, Wayne Jones, yeah. I always remember many years ago when he was in it and he's like, no, I'm not a practicer. I just can't be. He was quite open. He, he, he couldn't be bothered to practice a lot of the time, could he? He said he might have an odd hour here or there. Um, but it just wasn't something that he enjoyed doing. He just sort of... I suppose he was naturally good good enough to play. But it makes you wonder if you have got that ability, if you do practice a huge amount more hours on top, how much further you could actually go, doesn't it? 
Well, definitely. Again, it's it's like you, you listen to Gary, Gary, a very good friend of mine, Gary Anderson. He he doesn't practice nowhere near as much. He probably should do, but with his natural ability, he he doesn't need it. No. He just seems to go on that dartboard, and you would think he'd practice about five six hours a day the way he hits that treble twenty. But when you when you ask him, you say no, I don't know, maybe an hour here and there. Wow. I say, how how do you do it? Because. I, I feel as though the more you practice, the better you will become. Definitely. And I'm, I'm starting to put in the hours, yeah. the two, three hours a day, four leading up the big ones, and I'm beginning to see the benefits now, uh, so I'm going to continue doing that, but oh, I fantastic. think you do need to practice if I you think... want to. Yeah, really good career, like. I'm, I'm hoping that Gary, you know, it's awful to see Gary Anderson, obviously this weekend at the Masters, just being in so much pain with his back and all the different things. Do you know what I mean? He's, he's absolutely in agony at the moment, isn't he? Do you know what I mean? It's, oh. it's, it's awful to see. Hoping he's going to be able yeah. to put that right for, um, obviously with the Premier League starting and different things as well this Thursday. He's not going to have a huge amount of time in between all the, the schedule and that to actually get it fixed, is he? No, he's not. I know what it's like to have a sore back. I've had back problems in the past myself. So, but he's he's he really is struggling at the moment, and it's it, it isn't nice to see because no. he still he still hits the one eighty. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, it. it's amazing. Back, yeah. It's, it's sc- frustrating when you see it. It's scary yeah. when you think he's in agony and he's just bang 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 one eighty. Do you know what I mean? It's it's crazy, oh, isn't no. it? It really is. Well, listen, yes. John, I don't want to keep you any longer because I know you're probably a busy man. I just want to thank you so much for coming on DartsPlanet.tv today. It, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you. I really appreciate it. No problem at all. Man. Glad to have be on it. No thank problem. you so much. Well, listen, guys, to all of you that have watched the video, I hope you've enjoyed the interview with John today. Um, as always, guys, if you've not checked out my website, please do check out dartsplanet.tv. We've got loads of the latest videos coming in for darts information. We've got blogs from some of the other uh, dart bloggers as well. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please leave a like, turn your notifications on and hit that button. And that's, that's it for me this time, guys. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.